So, we're out here shooting, and for, this is our first uh, kind of uh, dialogue video. I thought we'd get Jay on camera finally. I've only been begging him to do it for about three years. And um, I'm holding his favorite gun here, the, the, the Tavor SAR. Your favorite gun, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, why do you love the Tavor SAR over the Tavor X95? Uh, I like how awkward the charging handle is. That's, um, that's good. That's I good. like the unintuitive controls, and I like the terrible trigger out of the box. So you, you thought removing the spring was well worth it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Makes it 100% buy for me. <laughs> so yeah, as you can tell, uh, he is uh, he's not a fan. But I have one I have one counter argument to that. Bayonet lug. You can stick a bayonet on this. What if the cow's attacking? Just butt stroking with it. Tactical cow butt stroking. Funnily enough, the uh, the British L85 does have a bayonet lug, and it has actually been used in combat. We all know how good the L85 is, right? Yeah, that that does kind of fit, doesn't <laughs> it? So yeah, we were out here. Um, we did this. You know, we've got a few parts to this video. I'm not sure how we're going to edit them together, but kind of comparing the two. So the X95. How do you feel about it? The first time I shot the Tavor, and let me preface this probably by saying, like, I'm not the biggest fan of bullpups in general. I have one bullpup in my collection, and that is the uh, Steyr AUG. Uh, it's the A3. I love that gun, probably rationally love that gun, because it's an AUG mostly. Um, but other than that, like, I've had some other bullpups in and out of my collection, and I just have never really been enamored with the... I think the advantages of the bullpup design inherently don't necessarily out, outweigh the, the drawbacks to a bullpup design. And that's that's trigger, that's controls, reliability in some cases with steel steel cased ammo that we've had on, on some bullpups. To be fair, this 18-inch uh, uh, SAR has performed better with steel case than the original 16-inch IDF. It, with yeah, very much four so. Years. I, don't, I don't know if it's the extra barrel length or or what I really have no explanation yeah. we did have some some failures with Wolf back in 2013 and that's not really a make or break for no. a lot of people you know just buy brass basically but yeah. we do shoot a lot but neither one of us reload so we kind of generally stick to, to steel cased ammunition where we can we're cheap bastards that's absolutely 100% true yeah we do have we do use brass sometimes for testing yeah, yeah. when you're just coming out blinking and having fun it's expensive enough just buying steel the X95 has basically corrected all of the issues that I had originally with the original Tavor the first time I shot it. The trigger is vastly improved. I haven't tested it on a scale, but it's much lighter. It's got almost a two-stage type of a, a break to it, but it's, it's very consistent and relatively light. I like the charging handle a lot better. Uh, the controls are much more conventional than the original Tavor, than, than the SAR. I just... If I didn't already have the AUG, and a lot of the complaints you could say probably about the SAR, you could also make about the AUG, but it's an AUG. If, if I didn't already have the AUG, I would probably have an X95. And I think one reason that people, and correct me if I'm wrong, YouTube world, but a lot of people that I've read comments online, they like the original Tavor look for much the same reason you like the, the AUG look. It's classic to them. They, yeah, this sure. from the first time they heard of an IWI Tavor, this is what they saw, right. and th this gun was in development for a long time. I mean, the first prototypes were 2001, and it really didn't start to see widespread use in the field till after 2006. Kind of to your point, I was very excited to shoot the Tavor the first time we shot it uh, uh, four years ago. Was 2013. That? That I looked was at the, the video, first video yeah. we did on it. Um, was that at Gary's place? And uh, it just left the trigger, honestly, and the reliability with the steel case, like we talked about, just left me very cold. There are things about the AUG that I really like the recoil impulse of the AUG. It's just kind of a straight, straight back into your shoulder kind of light recoil impulse. Um, and I, I just I love shooting it for some, for some reason. Speaking of recoil, and as I said in the in the table talk part of the video, I have modified the X95 there to get it as close to an IDF version as I was able, while still making it a Title One farm. Now that I have shaved some weight off of it, it does have a little bit more felt recoil. Yeah, it's I a can, little punchier. I can say that the the full size here has a more gentle recoil, but it also weighs a pound more and is a couple inches longer. Yeah. And the reason I really that really didn't want to do this video until I had you here was the, the accuracy part. Now, that's something yeah. that, in all honesty, I can speak to only in theoretical terms. People, some, I've, I've read comments around 
people say the accuracy on the X95 is, is broken, that something's wrong, that it's defective. What do you think? My typical accuracy standard is if I can consistently shoot uh, clay targets at 100 yards. That's usually what I aim for. With the types of rifles that I shoot generally, like that's more than acceptable for a battle rifle or assault rifle type accuracy. They can take care of those cows. Right. Um, it can hit the broad side of a cow if it needed to. I sighted this gun in with the, the Meprolite uh, red dot sight. This optic, it's not magnified. I generally shoot uh, prismatics on rifle calibers or I shoot adjustable optics. The red dot on here, very fat red dot, non-magnified, lot working against me. That said, I was able to pretty consistently shoot the clay targets, even standing at, a, at 100 yards. Um, I have a four inch steel target I hit occasionally. And then the eight inch I could pretty much hit every time um, without much effort. So it's, it's really, I, I think much has been made about the accuracy of these. And I think if you know what to expect going into it, it's going to work about as well as any out-of-the-box AR or any other, you know, AK-type platform or other, other type of semi-automatic uh, sporting rifle. It's as consistent as any other semi-auto rifle that I've shot that is not, you know, a match-grade, two-stage trigger, what, it, what, what have you. So um, I don't think the accuracy on this is inherently broken in any way. And I understand the argument, people say, well, it's a $2,000 gun, my $1,000, $800, even $600 AR can do MOA or even better. And to be fair, $2,000 is not, that's MSRP, street price is closer to $1,500, $1,600. And there are a lot, I mean, I had a PSL, Romanian PSL, uh, for several years, and I generally shot two or three inch groups with that and that's going for what fifteen hundred eighteen hundred dollars now oh god if you yeah can find them. 15 for the bare bones gun well up for the scope and extra mags and kit and all that stuff so what i'm saying is there's really no correlation the correlation of dollar per moa or whatever it is however it is people are factoring in that um isn't it's kind of an apple apple store and just thing uh you buy a gun for a purpose um, a lot of the guns that I buy are I buy because they're fun, um, not necessarily because they fill a specific role, but maybe they fill a specific niche in my collection. And I don't necessarily find that I need to justify every single purchase. Um, if you want a bullpup, it's this. This is a great bullpup. It'd be hard to it'd be hard to top it in my opinion based on I mean we've shot a lot of different bullpups and yeah and we've this got, is at the, the top of the, pile the regular M17 that the K&M M17 yeah. the FS2000 yep. I once shot my father's uh, KSB oh lord glad those aren't in demand anymore comparing everything to an AR if that's what you're going to do buy an AR the AR is mass produced I mean there are so many companies making parts and full guns now and the gun has been just tested and tested and revamped and revamped for the past 60 years. And it's kind of America's rifle now, at least as far as the modern sporting rifle. If you really want an AR, get an AR. Yeah, the, yeah, the Tavor is kind of falls into that camp of the, the 805 Bryn, the, the ARX, the, uh, the Daewoo K2, the FNC. They all have pros and cons, yeah. but... They're basically for those of us that don't want another AR. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, when I mentioned the FNC, it kind of dropped my memory. If you go back and look at a lot of the um, the guns from the 80s and 223, 556, like the FNC, the AR-180, the uh, the original AUG, SAA-1, the Daewoo K2, they were not one MOA guns either. And some of those guns cost $1,000 back then. People bought them because... No, for me personally, it's the history and the collectability sure. of it. I mean, that's the reason I set that X95 up the way it is. Is right. you know, yeah, looks like what the idea is carrying out. I think that's pretty nifty. We have there are a lot of guns that come through uh, Nisha's shop here, so we get to shoot a lot and we get to repeat, go or go back to a lot of different guns. Uh, but this is probably one we've gone back to more than just about any other. I'd say probably the CZ805 Bren. That's exactly what I was thinking. The Bren's the only other gun that, that we just throw in for just sheer pleasure. 
And the, 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 the Beretta ARX is another one that we, we come back to and quite the, frequently. And the Archer. And the Although Archer. we've had the Archer longer, so it might right. seem... I think it's one of those guns we always mean to take out. It, and we would, except for so many of the guns, because it is, at the end of the day, it's still an AK. Right. So the bottom line is, we take we actually have a lot of videos on this this bullpup, because we really like shooting it, so we just video it a lot. Yeah, I mean, if we're already out here pulling the trigger, might as well hit record, you right. know? But yeah, we just kind of wanted to revisit, and I wanted to get someone in here that could really talk to accuracy, and, uh, you know, we're going to try to start doing more videos like this with, with more than just me, so you get more than my opinion and my thoughts, and, you know, maybe break up the, the boring history lectures a little bit for you guys. Instead of one terrible opinion, you can get two terrible opinions. Or maybe even three some days. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or maybe we'll just do like a 30-minute video watching my cats do things. We could do that. Yeah, we could. It could be a screensaver. <laughs> do they still do those anymore? Screensavers? Yeah, basically. Yeah, not flying coasters. No, not that, that so much. Yeah, my first one was in DOS and it made my computer crash. Mm -hmm. We've got all the history and the, the actual features in the other parts. So. Right. Yeah, we have some other review type videos of this. Uh, so we have several follow up videos. We have an initial review whenever this actually first came through. Uh, yeah, and both, we've both had these guns. Both guns, yeah. Oh, and one final thing before we go on the full size here, not to neglect it in favor of the X95, is I know a lot of you that have these have dropped in Geisley and, and Timney triggers. I, uh, a professional friend has uh, is sending me a Timney to try in this. So we wanted to do the stock trigger today, but we will do a follow-up video to try to give the Tavor SAR its fair shake with an upgraded aftermarket trigger. But we were just trying to compare kind of apples to apples as best as possible and we have plenty of other videos showing that gun shot in stock form and every part on that is um is iwi and both sites are meprolite which is the same company so just trying to kind of keep it consistent but yeah really appreciate you tuning in and um, if you have any comments please post them below if you like this new format please let us know any suggestions of how to do it better what you'd like to hear or see us talk about Hit us up. We'll do our best. Yep. We'll catch you next time.